What's up everyone, Giant Opinions here. Today I'm going to be going over the main free agent in this class, and that is Anthony Rendon, star third baseman. So I'm going to be going over some pros and cons of him as a player, and uh, signing him to a deal. And then I'm going to list three teams that I have right now, who I think would be pretty good fits for him. Now, uh, some pros of Anthony Rendon. Let's just face it. You know, this might be somewhat of a hot take for some people, but I think Anthony Rendon is arguably a top 10 or 15 player in the entire MLB. He is that good. He's really He really emerged this season. Like, before he was underrated, but there were still some people who actually realized his talent, but he, he did so much better this year. He literally MVP-type numbers right there. Carried his team, especially in the playoffs, too. He is a phenomenal player, especially at the plate, but also he's also kind of underrated on defense. Now, yeah, he's not no he's not a Nolan Arenado or Matt Chapman. He doesn't have that kind of gold glove. But he'll still he's still above average. He'll still make some plays every now and then, and he's not a complete liability at third base. Um so that is he's a very underrated defender, but still an underrated hitter. Uh, also to mention his on base percentage, it's always around like a hundred points higher than his average. So I think it was like four fifteen or something this year, which is pretty good. So he will get on base even if he's not just swinging the bat. He's not just either a, a hit or miss kind of guy. He'll take some walks occasionally, and he'll he'll increase the pitch count. So that is also a very underrated trait is increasing the pitch count, making pitchers work. It's something that a team should really value more because it gets starting pitchers out of the game and the bullpen in, and that kind of uh, allows for some some offense per se. But uh, he's also clutch. He is a clutch player as we saw this postseason. Especially in the World Series, he was going off, and he's done all right in the postseason before. I mean, in 2016, I think he struggled a little bit, but he was all right in 2014. He had like 300 average in the postseason, but uh, this year he really did good in the postseason. He did kind of somewhat carry the Nationals along with the uh, Juan Soto and Howie Kendrick and uh, Strasburg and all of them. But and Anthony Rendon's also a long-term solution at third base. If you're signing Anthony Rendon, you know he's going to be probably the face of the franchise and your star third baseman for many years. I believe he wants a contract around $7 million or more, I'm guessing. So you will have to just fully commit to him and say, you know what, Anthony Rendon, you're our third baseman. For many years to come, you're staying here. You're not going anywhere. So he will be a long-term solution at third base for teams that want him. Now some cons to Anthony Rendon and possibly signing him. Number one, the big contract. You'll be have to be paying. You'll have to be paying him a lot of money. I'm expecting Nolan Arenado kind of money, maybe a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower. Probably a little bit lower though, because he's not that elite of his. He's not as elite of in, a defender. Excuse me, but you have to be paying him anywhere from like 260 to 300 million dollars, and it's going to be a long term deal too. So seven to possibly ten years. So if this could be a terrible contract. I don't. I don't think Anthony Rendon is just gonna just completely fall off or something. But uh, he will regress. He is getting older. I think he's twenty nine right now. So if you do sign him to that long term deal, he'll probably start regressing around year five per se, and he won't be as good. So you will kind of be locked into this contract. You can't really back out of it. I mean, you will. I mean, you can just release him, but that'll. Uh, you'll still lose the money on him. So it is somewhat of a gamble, but I feel like Anthony Rendon is still a safe player to. Uh, throw a big contract at. I see him as a team player. I don't see him just getting the contract and then not giving, uh, you know what, a bet in baseball. So uh, I kind of briefly touched on it, but he is getting older. So he is 29 right now. And by the end of his, his contract, he'll probably be like 37 or 40. But this kind of also ties in with something. And he does have a slight injury history. I believe uh, this season he was on the 10-day uh, IL or DL, whatever it's called anymore. But he does have some injury history. Now, it's not that bad. He's not like having broken hands, broken bones, none of that. He's not missing in entire seasons, but he does not play the, the complete 162 games like you'd want someone that's getting paid that much to play. Uh, like Bryce Harper, he'll probably play most mostly every game. Mike Trout plays mostly every game when he's not injured, um, but he does have some injury history, and that is somewhat of a concern, especially as he gets older. The injuries can definitely pick up on older players, so it is something you need to watch out for, uh, especially with that contract. You don't want to see that, but, you know, if his value, if, see, the higher risk, or the high reward is probably worth it for the high risk.
to be completely honest, because Anthony Rendon's a game changer. Let's just face the facts. He is elite. He is very good. So, now onto some teams I think should pursue Anthony Rendon. Uh, I, I kind of made this based on team needs and if they can afford a contract like this or not, so just hear me out. They're kind of a little bit unique, but, you know, we'll see what you think. Number one, this is like the main team everyone's talking about, predicting Anthony Rendon will go to, and it's Texas Rangers. It makes a lot of sense. It really does. He is a native Texan. I think he played high school and college in Texas, so it's his home state. He has some feelings for for them Texas people and the fans and everything there. And the Texas Rangers also desperately, desperately need a third baseman. Ever since Adrian Beltre has kind of been gone, they don't really have anyone. Gallo used to play there, but he's more of an outfielder now in DH. But they do need a solution at third base. It is a hole for this Texas Rangers team, and it makes a lot of sense to go after Anthony Rendon because he is a long-term solution at third base, and he's a veteran presence for that somewhat of a younger Rangers team. Uh, they're still trying to find an identity, but uh, the, the point is still the same. He would still help out the Rangers. He would be arguably their best player alongside Joey Gallo, and he would just be there for many years, and then when the Rangers start competing, he'll, he'll be more important to the team because that's when he'll start playing some more meaningful games. Uh, and they also have enough money to spend. Texas, they, they're not really paying many big contracts. The, the only one is Shinsu Chu. They'll probably uh, find a way to get rid of that, though. But they can still afford to give Anthony Rendon a mega deal. And I, I expect them to sign Anthony Rendon. But this is another team. This one's a little bit more unique and interesting. But I said the Seattle Mariners, you know. Yes, they have Kyle Seeger. And he was once good. That's why they signed him to a pretty solid or they signed him to a decently massive deal. But he's not living up to it, so he is below average now. They're paying him still over, like, $15 million or something. If you're the Mariners, you, you might just want to move on from Kyle Seager. He's not really doing anything good for your franchise anymore. Uh, you're just paying him basically dead money, so it would make a lot of sense to just get rid of him and then bring in Anthony Rendon, someone who the Mariners can build upon because the Mariners are a very young team. They are super young. They have talent coming up. They have, they have some very promising players uh, on the team and in their farm system, like uh, Jared Selenik, I think that's his name, Daniel Vogelbach, you saw Mitch Hanniger. They have some pieces to build around, and adding Anthony Rendon would definitely help the Seattle Mariners, and it would give them a long-term solution at third base, because I, I don't see him like regressing so much as to Kyle Seager. Uh, I think he'll still be elite for many years to come, but he'll, he'll fall off eventually, but anyways, that's besides, that's besides the point. Mariners are getting younger. I could definitely see them competing in maybe two or three years, and Anthony Rendon's value would be tremendous for them if he was on their team then, uh, and instead of on a rival team such as the Texas Rangers too. You gotta, you gotta remember that they might just want to sign him so that the Rangers can't have him because he is that much of a game changer. It's kind of scary if you have such a good player in your division like Mike Trout. They already have Mike Trout in their division too. Like that would be scary, and. It, it, it makes a little bit of sense. Now, they also have the money to pay him. They don't have, have many big contracts, like I said. Uh, just uh, Kyle Seager, and that's it. Uh, and they kind of need a superstar on the team. They don't really have a superstar player. Yes, Mitch Hanager was he had a breakout season in 2018. He was injured for most of this year. Uh, Vogelback, he looks good, but he's not really a superstar player quite yet, I'd say. So, he would be a cornerstone for this Mariners franchise. It, it would kind of be like a Robbie Cano deal like they uh, did back uh, years ago, but I I could actually like the move of Anthony Rendon going to the Mariners. Be on the lookout for that. I, I kind of, I, I would be very interested to see if they actually made this move or not. And then the last team, it's kind of just a throwaway, but it, it, makes, it makes some sense. Uh, Miami Marlins, very young team. They are not paying, like, any money at all. I think they're only paying $21 million to their current roster right now. They have so much money to spend in free agency. They could easily get Anthony Rendon signed to a mega deal. And yes, they do have Brian Anderson. So people, I mean, Brian Anderson's good. I like him. He's underrated. But he can play the outfield. It makes so much more sense to just move Brian Anderson to the outfield or first base and then have Anthony Rendon play third because Anthony Rendon would be a superstar to this Marlins team that needs something. And they, they will probably be competing. It might take them some more time, but since they do have the money, uh, they, they might sign some free agents and be contending even sooner for all we know. But... I, I do like it if he would go to the Marlins. He is a veteran presence, too. And he would be a cornerstone for them to build around and sign some more free agents, say, in the outfield where they could upgrade more. 
Uh, but that's kind of what I have to say. Those are the three teams I think would best fit Anthony Rendon. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, do you do you want your team to go after him? And if so, what is your team? And tell me why. I'm kind of interested to see. But that's all I have. Let me, let me know what you think, and I will see you all in the next one.